Having previously defined the difference between power and energy and how they're related by time, neatly brings us on to this concept of capacity factor. It's a term that you'll see used quite widely in relation to the power generation industry, um, and it's a very valuable one to be familiar with and to be able to manipulate. It's a metric that again describes the relationship between energy and power and time, but in a subtly different way, and I'll explain it here. So we saw previously that power, the power output, for example, of a, of a power plant, let's call this a 200 megawatt wind farm, as a hypothetical example, can vary on a continuous basis. So as on the chart below, we're saying that we've got a 200 megawatt wind farm and the output is varying over the course of 24 hours from anywhere close to zero up to maybe 200 megawatts, a rate of energy generation of 200 megawatts. And we also saw that you can calculate the amount of energy that's been generated by that wind farm. Graphically, we can represent that as the area under this power against time curve. So megawatts multiplied by hours is megawatt hours. And in this case, that comes out at an energy production of 2,400 megawatt hours. We can also calculate the average power. We can either do that by looking at the data for power at different times and just calculate the average over the period of time. We can also calculate the average power if we know the energy output. We know the 2400 megawatt hours because we've metered it for example and then we simply divide that by the number of hours over which it was generated and that will tell us the average rate at which it was generated in this case 100 megawatts. Now that brings us on to well, what do we mean when we talk about a 200 megawatt wind farm because clearly this 200 megawatt wind farm is only producing an output of 200 megawatts at one instant in time over the course of this day. Most of the time it's operating below that. What we mean when we say a 200 megawatt wind farm is that it has a capacity of 200 megawatts. In other words, that's a way of saying that the maximum rate at which this could generate energy is a rate of 200 megawatts. We could be talking about a wind farm, we could be talking about any other type of power generation. When we talk about power capacity, rated capacity, installed capacity, various terms you'll hear referring to the maximum rate at which it could produce energy. So an obvious statement to make then is that the capacity of our wind farm in this case is not telling us anything about the actual power it generates at any point in time because that is varying on a continuous basis. And if it's not telling us anything about how the power generation is varying on a continuous basis, it also means that it's not telling us anything about the amount of energy that that facility is, is going to generate over a period of time. So given that we're talking about capacity factor in this lesson, as you'll see, when we're talking about the relationship between power, energy and time here with capacity factor, the power output we'll be talking about is the maximum potential power output of our power plant. So we can define it like this. We can define capacity factor as the actual energy generated over a period of time divided by the capacity of the power plant that's generated that energy multiplied by the time period over which it's been generated. So you can see that it's megawatt hours on the top line and it's megawatt hours on the bottom line, which means that capacity factor in itself doesn't have any units, it's just a ratio. Most often it's expressed as a percentage. You can also see that because we're talking about energy generated and a time period, as with energy, you can't talk about capacity factor unless you're stating the time period over which you're calculating it. So we can start putting numbers into there. We know that the capacity is 200 megawatts. That's the maximum potential output of our wind farm in this case. The time period that we're using in this case is 24 hours a day, which means that the bottom line of that equation is 4,800 megawatt hours. Graphically, we know that energy is power multiplied by time. So in this case, it's the area of that rectangle, 200 megawatts multiplied by 24 hours. 
In other words, it's the amount of energy that you could generate from this particular power plant were it to operate at its maximum possible output for the entire period of time. In practice, of course, we know that the actual energy that's generated from this wind farm was 2,400 megawatt hours. That goes on the top line. You don't need to be a brilliant mathematician, therefore, to work out that the capacity factor in this case is 50%. What we're saying is that the area under the power curve, the red shaded area, is 50% of the area of that full rectangle bounding the chart, the 24 hours multiplied by the 200 megawatts. The actual energy generated is half of the theoretical maximum you could generate were that plant to operate at full capacity for the full period of time. We also know that the average power in this case is 100 megawatts, either because we've calculated it from the power data itself, or we've calculated it from the fact you can divide the actual energy output by the number of hours. In other words, the same area as that more complicated red shape under the actual power curve would be that rectangle were we to operate this wind farm not at its capacity of 200 megawatts, but at an average power of 100 megawatts continuously for a 24 hour period. Again, you can see therefore that another way of defining that capacity factor would be to take the average power divided by the maximum power, by the power capacity of the power plant. And finally, another way of manipulating this chart would be to say, OK, how could we generate that same amount of actual energy output by operating the power at its maximum output, at its power capacity of 200 megawatts? How many hours would we need to do that for? And that's this rectangle. Again, all those red areas are exactly the same. Now we're saying that to produce 2,400 megawatt hours, rather than operate at 100 megawatts for 24 hours, we could operate at 200 megawatts for just 12 hours. Again, you could say that the capacity factor, therefore, is 12 hours divided by 24 hours. The 12 hours is what we call full load hours. So this term full load hours is a way of describing the actual energy output of your power plant in terms of the equivalent amount of hours to produce that power were that plant to operate at its maximum capacity, full load being another, another way of expressing that. So what capacity factor is providing, it's a measure of how much you're making use of your installed capacity because it's relating power, energy and time but the power measure that we're using in capacity factor is what we call the installed capacity. It's the maximum potential power output of the power plant. And then we're measuring compared to how much energy that power plant could produce if it operated at that maximum capacity for a period of time. We're comparing that against how much it actually produces. If you were to operate at maximum output for the whole period of time, that big red rectangle that we saw on the previous chart, you'd obviously have a capacity factor of 100%. The actual output would be the same as the maximum theoretical output you could get. In practice, it will always be lower, and it will be lowered by either operating below the maximum possible power output, because there's less wind or there's less sunshine, or if we're talking about something like a gas plant, because there's simply less demand. You, you don't need to operate at maximum power output because you don't need to supply that much power. Alternatively, it could operate for less time than is available, which is what a concept like full load hours is, is trying to capture, the number of full load hours being less than the number of hours in the, in the total period. And that might be because the plant is down for maintenance, it might be because it's broken down. In the case of a wind farm, it might be because there's no wind. In practice, of course, capacity factor is going to be lower than 100% because of a combination of reasons. Power plants will operate below maximum power, and also they will have some downtime for whatever a reason. And so again, just to stress the point, given that we're talking about comparing energy production to 
a theoretical energy production, as with energy, if you're talking about capacity factor, you do need to reference the time period over which you're measuring it or calculating it. In the previous slides, I've used a time period of 24 hours just because it's easier to draw a simple graph to illustrate that. In practice, most often you would measure capacity factor for power plants over a year, but I have heard capacity factor also calculated over periods of a month or perhaps over a period of six months or seasonally, for example, to compare capacity factor in the winter versus capacity factor in the summer. Okay, thank you.